oh my god, we're witnessing the first wild born Taros in the wilderness in Denmark. Look at it, it's right here. At first, I thought I was dreaming because I can't believe that I'm part of a project where humans can, for the first time in over 5,000 years, stand and experience an animal that resembles and acts like the original aurochs. The large herbivores that once roamed Europe, it's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> we human beings, we have forgotten that the world was once filled with large herbivores. We have forgotten how nature used to look like. The Taurus really resembles the aurochs. When you look at the bull from far away, you see this black animal with a white line across its back. You see big horns be used to dig holes and to gain access to plant roots. You see how it uses its long legs to migrate across large open spaces. The frogs really like when the taros come down here. Taros really keeps the space open, making sure the water can get a higher temperature, perfect for amphibians like the frogs. The taros is what we call a keystone species. Throughout evolution, you have seen that the large herbivores like taros, they actually open the door for other species. It can be small flowers or even dung beetles benefiting from all the dung. Long term, the landscape will be opened up. They will create pathways, they will open up the, the woodlands, they will bring a lot of variation to the landscape. We have gone from having a Europe full of large herbivores to have basically none. It's no longer about us. This is about nature, having its own space, having its large herbivores back, finally. And the Taurus is really a symbol of that. If we want to do the right thing for nature, it really requires that we take a big step.